Welcome to another episode of Ask Sam. This is where you can ask about relationships, sex, and everything having to do with people. In today's episode, we don't actually have a question. We're going to talk about the misconceptions that women have about online dating. That's the Tinders, the uh, OKCs, the Bumbles, those kinds of things. Because there is some fundamental stuff that women are not exposed to and have no idea that it is happening that are really, really important to understanding how these platforms work, how men are forced to interact with them, not by women, but by the, the makers, and why it's such a bad experience for women and how you can make it better based on knowing how this is working for men. And men should know that what women see on these platforms is very different from what they see. I think men already know this, but maybe I'm wrong. But so we're going to talk first to the women. We'll have another episode for the men. All right, ladies, here's things you have to understand. When a man goes onto one of these platforms, he is inundated with so many profiles, millions and millions of profiles. And you say, well, that's great. Men have plenty to choose from. Well, sure, that sounds nice, but here's the reality. At least nine out of 10, if not far more, of those profiles are fake. For men, there's this unlimited number of profiles, right? Like thousands and thousands, no matter where they go. But the problem is, that sounds great. Well, there's all these women to meet, but they're not profiles of women. They may be profiles that look like women in most cases, but they're not actually. Most profiles that men see on any platform are completely fake. They're actually, in most cases, just generated by the platform itself as a way to make it look like there's people to talk to. Because if you think about it, if you start a new dating site or anything like that, you have to seed it with thousands or tens of thousands of fake profiles because you need to have lots and lots of of potential matches who exist in any potential market. So every little small town anywhere in the world, more or less, needs to have a lot of profiles in it. In many cases, they make more profiles than humans actually live in some of those places. Now, of course, when you're looking at a New York City or Los Angeles, they don't. But in small communities, they will often have all these people listed as living in a very small area. And you'll be like, but I know everyone who lives here and none of these are those people, right? And there's tons of them and there's only five people who live here that's they just seed them with all these fake profiles and if you ever look at dating site applications like the actual software the ability to pre-generate fake profiles is a built-in function that most of them advertise plus then there are tons and tons of bot generated accounts these are ones made by third parties not by the platforms whose goal is to catfish you automatically pick up information just gather information about the market who knows but there are so many of those as well to the point that for men, because remember for women, you don't need very many profiles. Not very many women actually look at dating applications. They expect men to look at the dating applications and select the women. So for men, you have to present lots and lots of profiles. You could effectively have a dating application with zero profiles of men and women would join it and just wait for men to contact them. So then we have the profiles of actual people. Once you weed through the easily 99% of fake profiles, what you're left with is the actual humans. And of those, a surprising percentage, possibly most, are actually men. And I don't mean men pretending to be women. I just mean men, right? When you get down to actual accounts, they tend to be loaded with men just listed as women. And so you're already trying to filter through this group. When you get to the people who are at least showing pictures of women who you think are actually humans, you now have some chance that if you contact them, maybe they'll talk to you because all those other accounts won't, or they'll have obvious scripted responses and there's no human behind it. So we're talking about a tiny percentage of all the profiles that men see. Of those profiles, many don't have any information or what they do have uh, is very, very limited. And of course, you're only gonna be attracted to a small percentage of those. It becomes increasingly tiny pool of real people by the time you get to that. So for men, looking to just have a conversation with a woman on a dating site could mean dozens of hours of swiping right as fast as they can in the hopes of 
discovering who's real. Remember, for men, we never know who's real. There's no way to. There are so many profiles, and real women don't fill out their profiles very well. In fact, sometimes the most fake-looking ones are the actual women, because many women don't put any information about themselves, only put on a few pictures, and choose really bad or crazy pictures that don't make any sense. It's impossible to figure out which ones are real and which ones are not. So this is the starting point. If you match with a man on any dating site, you have to understand he has no reason to believe you're real. The only thing he did was see a profile that he was willing to swipe right on. And let's be honest, this is it takes so many swipe rights or whatever mechanism you use on your dating site to match with a real person, no man is paying attention. They can't. If you paid attention to those profiles, you would never swipe right on enough of them to actually find a real person ever. Mathematically, it doesn't work. Again, math in dating. So for men, it's about swiping right really, really quickly in a large amount. People have made devices that swipe right for them to speed this process up because that's where the problem is. You don't need to be picky because the women are going to be picky for you. On the off chance that you get a response, there's still only a 1 in 10 chance that that person is going to be real. And if that person is real, there's only about a 1 in 10 chance that they're not a prostitute of some sort. Trust me, this is real. Men who use dating sites put in an inordinate amount of time simply trying to create an interaction with a real person and then have to start weeding through the unbelievable pool of people just trying to sell a sexual service and not actually interested in whatever it is that the site was for in the first place. This is the basis for men using online dating apps and there's no realistic way around it. Yes, dating platforms could weed out all of that, but if they did so, they would appear to not have any people on them and no one would join because there was no one for them to imagine they were talking to. If you go to a Tinder or an OKC, these are preceded with so many accounts. Even the real people, though, are often uh, accounts that have been dead for years. Not the people, just the accounts. So you may be like, ooh, swipe right. I hope she talks to me. She hasn't been on the site in four years. The pictures aren't current. The account isn't current. No one's logging in. There's nothing behind the scenes because they found someone who moved on or just didn't like the site or whatever. It's a thing where you need a lot of people to always be there for it to make sense. So the only way you can really get it to work is to have lots and lots of fake accounts so that the men hang around and swipe on the site a lot to get the interaction so that the few women that are on there eventually get someone who swipe on them. The system's kind of crazy. In theory, you could make a site that worked much better, but to do so, you would have to have customers, users of the system that understood that there's only a small number of people out there and were okay with that. What we actually have is people who don't want to think about how it works, are hopeful that there's lots more people out there than there really are, and want to lie to themselves. The average person will lie to themselves at any chance that they can, and dating is a system that is generally depressing, so everybody is pretty willing to lie to themselves to make it feel better. It's kind of human nature. It's sad, but it's true. So this is what we're left with, is a system where you have to seed it with lots of fake accounts, and then a lot of people prey on the people who are willing to put up with lots of fake accounts. And so from a male perspective, you are forced, there is no way around it, that you have to wade through a pool of nearly all fake accounts in the hopes of finding a real account and then wade through all of the people who are either prostitutes or hoping to be prostitutes, sugar babies or whatever. And that is not looking for what the man is looking for, right? No man is on a dating site looking for a sugar baby or other form of prostitute. It just isn't a platform meant for that. It doesn't make sense. There are sugar daddy websites that are specifically for that where everyone on the site has acknowledged that that's what they're looking for ahead of time and any actual sugar daddy is going to be on those sites because they have mechanisms to weed out all of that crap because they know they're not looking for a thousand uh, accounts to swipe through really quickly. They don't want to do that. They want to look at real accounts that are paying money to be on there, right? Women pay to be on sugar baby sites and have real accounts and to get prioritized to sugar daddies. That's how competitive the market is. Women pay, not men. So when you're looking for a sugar baby, you would go to those sites. You would never 
be willing to be a sugar daddy and use some other regular dating app. That would be crazy because it doesn't do your job for you. It's, it's a terrible experience. If you want to be a sugar daddy, you will get to be and it'll be easy for you. So all of those girls that are out there trying to find a sugar daddy, all the ones just looking for a prostitute, men are on there. If they wanted a prostitute, they drive down the street and find one. They're not hard to find. So that doesn't make any sense. That makes the platform that much harder for men. So a man may swipe, and I am not kidding, on more than a thousand profiles without any way to know which one of them is a real person or not, not even a hint, to eventually get to a point where maybe someone will respond to them and carry on a conversation and hope that it's a good one, right? The math is not good for online dating sites, but women need to understand what men are going through. But the one thing that will make it better is if men understand that this is happening, but most men I think do because we're faced with it, but women need to understand that this is happening and that men get very little information. Women on most of those dating sites actually are presented with more information than men are. So they're seeing a different experience. They often think, well, this man should know this thing about me. They aren't, men are not told that, right? Men are just given a picture in most cases or a picture in a tiny little blurb of like, I like ponies and eating sushi. Right? Any computer can generate, I like ponies and eating sushi. My favorite movie is, these are just random things. No human is behind most of those things. You can't expect a man to engage with you because you said you like ponies and sushi. Why would, that doesn't separate you from the bot that said the same thing two seconds ago. So these platforms are very, very challenging for men and they're challenging for women because none of this is obvious to women. Women are not presented with all of these fake accounts. Some, for sure but not in the same kind of numbers as men. Women are presented with a completely different experience. They're presented with many fewer accounts, which they probably don't go through with in any great number anyway. Women are not going to invest the kind of time that men are going to, because men have to, men have no choice. Women can simply allow men to contact them first in most cases, so they can put in very little effort into the platform, sometimes just joining and doing nothing else and waiting for men to come in. And of course, men have to contact everybody possible because we never know which ones are real. So we contact so many people in the hopes of just finding out if they're ever going to respond in any fashion whatsoever, let alone a good one. Right, so the way that this works, women are presented with a completely different experience that makes it very hard for them to empathize with men because they have no idea that men are inundated with these fake accounts, presented with men pretending to be women, um, and given none of the information necessary to track whether someone is potentially human or not. If you could, no man would be on any dating site. They would just give up as soon as they saw the numbers. They'd be like, oh, this is completely worthless. I could spend days doing this and never actually interact with a human. Why waste the time? You wouldn't, right? You would find a way to go somewhere else and meet women some other way. So getting everybody to understand this will make your experience better, right? And women have the opportunity to react better to men being forced to act the way that they do. Now, that doesn't mean that men should be jerks or be completely uh, shallow about how they interact with women on these sites. No, of course not. You still want to find a man who's good, right? It's not that it's not that magically simply by being stuck in this terrible system that men become better people, but women often react negatively to logical reactions from men, right? Get angry at a man who had no idea he was talking to a human or no reason to believe you were a human and you've presented no proof. And often bots will get very, very angry. They're scripted to do so and act exactly the way that you end up acting when you don't empathize. The only tool that women really have to show men that they're real is empathy. Actually thinking about what it must be like when you're a man and have to go through this process and how, and how it's going to be when you actually talk to a woman. Having that empathy will set you apart from the bots and give you a much better experience because if you get angry at men behaving logically, you're gonna have a bad experience. The only men who are going to be left are going to be really bad ones. Men who were willing to invest lots of time in nothing. That is not what you want long-term. That is a really bad indicator for a long-term relationship. The best case scenario is the man who swiped right and is willing to then have a good conversation once he is convinced you're real. All right, leave your comments below, ask more questions. I will see you in the next question.